Well, good morning. My name is Steve Ramirez. Um, I've been talking sports, Southern California sports the last few weeks. And last week I did a uh, video on projections for uh, UCLA's football season. And so uh, thought I would um, give some equal time to USC on what, what I think uh, will happen this year for the USC football team. Last year, USC was four and eight overall and three and six in the Pac-12. Um, but bigger things are expected this year. Um, you see, uh, USC has brought in a bunch of uh, transfers, but the biggest obviously is a uh, new coach, Lincoln Riley, who made uh, Oklahoma into a national title contender. Every year, Oklahoma was near the top of the Big 12, and they uh, they made the uh, college football Final Four a few times. Um, the, the question is, can he do the same for USC? Can he put USC in that title contention every year? I think eventually he will. Um, the question is um, about this season. He, he did bring in some elite prospects to the transfer portal. And, uh, but I, yeah, you know, USC is getting a lot of hype this year because of those, uh, because of Lincoln Riley as their coach. He's one of the better play callers in the country, um, offensive play callers in the country. And uh, he has brought in a bunch of elite prospects, elite skill players. But I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit on on them going from four and eight to national champion or college into the college football playoff. Uh, they're they're gonna be highly competitive this year, I believe. But even all-star teams, um, and you could say uh, what USC has brought in with their skill positions, that they're, uh, they're of that quality. But even all-star all teams take time to, uh, to adjust to, to, to one another. There's a classic uh, Herb Brooks uh, quote of all-star teams fail because they rely just on talent. It takes more than talent to win. You have to have a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of knowing what each player can do and make sure he, he does his job. But USC has brought in a lot of elite prospects and, not, and talent is probably the most important factor in a football team. Uh, some of those players that he's he's brought to USC are uh, quarterback Caleb Williams, who was his quarterback at Oklahoma last year, uh, brought in wide receiver Jordan Addison from Pitt. He was the Blitnikoff Award winner as the top receiver in the country last year, and he brought um, running back Travis Dye, a transfer from Oregon. So uh, with an offense. Uh, offensive players like that, USC is going to score some points. But the question is, will they be able to stop teams? That's um, going in, it seems that's going to be their weakness. Uh, they're young on the defensive side, they're young on offensive line. So will there be time, you know, the, what's that going to look like? Are they, are they going to be able to run the ball effectively? Is Caleb Williams going to be running for his life or is he going to have time to get the ball to these elite prospects like like uh, Jordan Addison? Um, and we shall see uh, um, how that's going to work out. Now let's, uh, let's take a look at their schedule. Okay, I have uh, USC's uh, schedule up here on the right. Um, they begin the season at the Coliseum against Rice. Um, a good tune-up game, a type of game uh, that USC should win. Type of game, uh, if you're a new coach, kind of uh, re rebooting the program, which basically that's what's happening here at USC. Um, it's kind of a game where they should win and should win handily, and it'll be a feel-good moment. Uh, then the next week they're at Stanford. Uh, 
Always a difficult game for USC when they go to Stanford. They seem to have been able to handle Stanford at the Coliseum. And even when they've won, they've kind of struggled a bit at times up, up at the farm. Um, and I'm not sure about this Stanford team. Stanford had, in, in the David Shaw era, uh, one of their worst teams in the last 10 years or so, 10, 15 years or so. Um, but David Shaw is, is one of the top coaches in the country, and it's hard to imagine that they would have two really bad years. But on the surface, I think you have to pick USC in this game. Probably will be a close game, but I see USC just having uh, too much firepower for Stanford. Week three, they come back to the Coliseum and they uh, host Fresno State. Um, Fresno State is a, is a group of five from the Mountain West team. And um, they don't have the depth of a USC or any of the power five type of uh, uh, teams, but they have they have talent on that team, and now they have uh, Jeff Tedford is back as coach. So you know the the quarterback play is going to be pretty good, and uh, I think they're going to give USC a battle. I think uh, USC will pull pull away late, uh, but it should be a competitive ball game. Uh, week four, USC hits the road again to Oregon State. Um, or this is a game that USC probably should win. Um, Oregon State has done really good the last few years under Jonathan Smith. He's he's built a pretty good program, the former uh, Glendora High uh, uh, standout. Uh, then uh, week five, USC hosts Arizona State, followed by week six, they host Washington State. Those are... Uh, uh, Arizona State seems a program on the decline. They they lost a lot in the transfer portal. Um, and the question is, did they make enough back? I'm not sure that they did. Uh, they seem, like I said, they seem to be kind of on the slide. And it's a question of this could be Herm Edwards' last year. At least that's the talk around the country. Um, then Washington State. Uh, Washington State had a decent team last year. But I'm not sure they have the firepower uh, with the players that they have back. Um, but they have the firepower to compete with what USC has. Then we get, so I'm looking at USC to start out 6-0. and And then uh, then they go to Utah. And that that might be a little bit too much of a hill to climb. Utah is, is, returns almost everyone from their Rose Bowl team last year. Um, and also, Utah is extremely difficult to build to beat in in Utah. Um, I think it'll be a competitive game, but um, I worry about uh, USC's defensive line. And Utah runs the ball extremely well. They they have good quarterback play, um, and so I think that's a game that that Utah should win. And um, after that, USC has their bye week before they uh, go to Arizona. Uh, Arizona's kind of a, is a, a team on the rise. They were uh, really, really bad a couple years ago, but they got a new, a new, a new coach uh, beginning last year. And uh, he had a pretty good, uh, Jeb Fitch had a pretty good uh, recruiting year along with uh, bringing in some good players in, in, through the transfer portal. But uh, I, I could see USC winning that game. I don't think uh, Arizona is ready just yet. Uh, then the next two weeks after that, USC hosts California and Colorado. Uh, Cal is kind of on a downhill slide. Um, and uh, that's a game that, that USC should win. And I think they should win uh, convincingly. Same with Colorado. Um, Colorado is, is uh, not expected to be one of the better teams in the in the Pac-12. They're picked near the bottom uh, in the uh, in the uh, preseason uh, conference poll. And then uh, USC uh, closes the season at UCLA and at home 
versus Notre Dame. Uh, I think the UCLA game will be an extremely competitive game. Um, the weakness of both teams, I believe, is their defense, and both teams should be uh, highly powered offensively. And uh, I just see uh, UCLA uh, just uh, slipping by in this game. They'll be—I uh, believe they'll be able to outscore USC. Um, UCLA uh, has a pretty good offense again this year, and um, like I said, it's a question of their defense. Same at USC, and uh, uh, it's, it's going to be—it's uh, going to be a very good game, I believe. Going into the year, that's—that's that's the feeling. As the season progresses, we'll see how that changes. Then USC uh, closes the regular season against Notre Dame. Uh, I have that down as a loss. Um, Notre Dame uh, is a, is picked to be in the top 10 this year. Um, they have a really good defense. They return a lot on defense. Uh, they have a new quarterback. And I think early in the year, they may struggle a bit offensively. But by the end of the year, I think they could be a very good offensive team. And uh, their, their defense is strong. So I think they will be, be able to... Uh, limit U USC somewhat. Um, so my final tally for USC is nine and three overall, seven and two in conference play. And uh, they should be able to play in one of the conferences better better bowls, whether that's, uh, I don't see them in the Rose Bowl, but I could see them in the Alamo Bowl, maybe the Holiday Bowl. Um, and now the Vegas Bowl is, is a pretty good bowl with the new the new stadium in Las Vegas. So that's uh, that's kind of my prediction for USC this year. One final thought is, um, like I said, I, I see USC uh, going nine and three this year. I think that'll be a good first step in the uh, Lincoln Riley era, and I see them getting getting better. I think I'm not sure if they can be as good as they were in the Pete Carroll era in the uh, early to mid 2000s, but they uh, they look pretty, I think in two years when they go into the Big Ten, they should be right up there. Maybe, I don't know, right up there with Ohio State, but near the near the top of the Big Big Ten when they, when they make that move. But this year, uh, be a good first step. So that's my thoughts on uh, the USC Trojans. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, until next time.